Okay, so it's 5.31. Uh, let me just say a few words to introduce the, the three speakers that we have today. Sekou Keita, Thomas Renon, and Jean Vallette. The three of them are, are young researchers. Two of them discovered their interest towards immigration economics at Cerdine, Clermont-Ferrand, Sekou and Jean. While Thomas would say that is, is the, the big data guy in the, in the group. So they basically merged their highly complementary skills to, to, to produce this paper. The usual suspects of Fender's origin, media reporting, and native attitude towards immigration. So Sekou will be presenting. The three of them are online. Sekou, the floor is yours for approximately 45 minutes. Thanks a lot, Simone. And uh, thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to present our, our work. So as mentioned, it's joined with uh, Jerome and Thomas who are both present and will answer questions in the chat. So the presentation will follow a standard uh, roadmap. I will first provide some motivation and context and situate the paper in the literature. And then in the data part, I will discuss more in detail the media data we used. So this will be an important section. And then we will discuss uh, how we can estimate the effects of the, the, the policy we will discuss on um, attitudes towards immigration using survey data. And uh, then we will quick, quickly provide some concluding remarks. So the bigger picture of this paper is the observation that immigration and crime are usually jointly considered in people's mind, if you will follow uh, uh, public discussions also in the, in the media and in the policy debates. And a good example is the 2016 US presidential election. But we can observe uh, such patterns in many occasions also just discussing with friends. Usually you, you, uh, when you talk about immigration, crime usually pops up as a, as a topic. So many people suspect that um, newspapers and media in general, but here the focus is on newspapers, shape the um, correlation between attitudes towards immigration and perceptions uh, of crime related to, to uh, immigration, so crime of foreigners. And this can be done in two ways. First, journalists have a lot of freedom when they choose what they will report, so choosing topics and also it, within the topic choosing uh, which type of crime they will report on. And then there's another margin of adjustment, which is the way the article is framed and what information goes inside the article. So now, even if we assume that some journalists have or, uh, or a media outlet has an agenda, there are many papers showing that um, uh, media news, uh, newspapers usually follow an agenda, either right or, or, or left leaning. Uh, it's not clear what's the right way to report on a topic to achieve your goal, because it's very difficult to run experiments and see how different ways of reporting affect the reader's perceptions. So in the context of immigration and crime in Germany, there's um, uh, a rule, uh, a self-regulation by uh, newspapers, which I will talk about later, but a nice illustration of this difficulty to identify the right way to report on crime is taken from this quote of the Stuttgarter Zeitung published in January 2016, where they basically show that for the same crime, following the um, events in December 2015, to, uh, to January 2016, there were uh, some sexual aggressions in the city of Köln and many newspapers reported differently. Some reported the origin and said that the suspects were of Syrian origin or uh, Middle East and others did not. So, so this shows that the journalists have a lot of freedom when they write the article and choose what to reveal. So that's the, basically the topic of this uh, paper. And we try to, to use a policy experiment to identify whether the reporting policy of media on crime impacts native attitudes towards immigration. And we focus on a specific policy, a change in po uh, reporting policy, which I will discuss later. So our main contribution here is 
to discuss more the how uh, media should report and how this affects natives' attitudes rather than the what, because there are already uh, many papers showing that propensity to report more crime or more topics on immigration are related to natives' attitudes. What is lacking is the discussion on how to do that, how to report conditional on an agenda. So we used mainly two different identification strategies. Um, both are based on this exogenous shift in policy and both use the distribution of a newspaper called the uh, Sächsische Zeitung, which changed the, the, its reporting policy. So in the first identification strategy, which we call reduced form, we don't rely on the content of the newspaper. We only use the diffusion and the advantage of this identification strategy is obviously that it doesn't rely on how we code the, the text analysis, but it is potentially affected by omitted variables. We also use an IV strategy using the text and the content of the newspaper articles. So this is much more precisely estimated, but the, the downside of this uh, identification strategy is that we are limited in the coverage of uh, the number of articles we have. So in a nutshell, our results show that uh, the mentioning the origin of criminals systematically affects natives' attitudes towards uh, immigration. And this effect is driven by mentioning that the criminals are natives. So back to the, the first quote I showed you, um, the, actually, in Germany, there's a German press council. So this is an association of journalists and they have a set of rules. They are not uh, binding, but it's uh, regulated by peer review. And in this press codex, there's an article called 12.1 uh, that states that journalists should not reveal the origin of criminals unless this information is really necessary to understand the crime. So this is the this is the general situation since the 1970s, I think. Of course, this measure is uh, highly discussed. And in the 2015-16 uh, New Year's Eve, there was a major shock when I think most in people in the audience followed this event when uh, there were hundreds of sexual aggressions in the city of Cologne. And in the first reports, most traditional media did not mention the origin of the offenders, although in the uh, social media, it was already rumored that they were from Middle East descent. So here you can see that the discussion on the lying press increased a lot on Twitter and also uh, the Google search in January jumped around the topic. So people were suspicious. Why did the newspapers did not disclose the origin of the suspects? So then, uh, then followed uh, an intense discussion on the foundations of this article 12.1. And in um, July 2016, so here you can see the date, this is the article published by the Sächsische Zeitung. It's a newspaper published in the, uh, in the west of Germany. So this is the city of Cologne here where the events happened. And six months later, we are interested in the policy shift of this newspaper here. So it's, uh, it's on the opposite side. So here's the, an extract of the article they published to explain to their readers why they would from now on change their reporting policy. In particular, they specify that they will not follow the recommendation of the German press council anymore. And what's interesting here is that, so they said that they will always report the uh, nationality or the origin of suspects of criminals when they write on crime. What's interesting here is that the, the objective of their policy is well in line with the intention of the, so if I go back here, the uh, intention of the German press codex, which is to avoid prejudice against minorities. So the Sächsische Zeitung has the same objective, but comes to a radically different conclusion of what's the right policy. And if you think about this, it, this goes boils down to what you think is the uh, way people form beliefs and how they update beliefs. So depending on the model you have in mind, the right policy can be either the one of the Sächsische Zeitung or the one of, recommended by the um, 
German press council. So why should the reporting policy in, uh, regarding the origin of criminals and offenders affect natives' attitudes toward immigration? So we don't have a, a specific model in mind, but there are several theoretical expectations. So one, you can think in terms of a Bayesian model where people have some, people do not really observe the crime rates directly, but they infer it from the rates of reporting they read in the newspaper. And if you change the, the rate of, um, let's say the, the share of crime articles reporting that the criminal is German, then people can update their, their beliefs. Another way to think about this is in models of statistical discrimination. If there's a high share of articles that don't reveal any origin of criminals, people will infer their own shares are based on their beliefs. And um, this can also lead to, to, to biased estimates of the real share of uh, foreign criminality. So in such models also, if you improve the information that is available to people, it can uh, lead to, to changes in attitudes. So this paper speaks to the overall literature, which is uh, quite rich, uh, showing that how media uh, reporting and newspapers can affect political and economic behavior. Within this literature, there's a smaller niche on the effects of media on natives' attitudes towards immigration. Here, there are two papers that stand out with respect to ours. One is the job market paper by Milena Durelova. So she studies the effect of media slant in the US. In particular, she uses the fact that in the, the wires, um, I, I forgot the, the name of the institution, but they decided to remove the word in illegal immigrants in, uh, in US newspapers. But the most closely related paper to ours is a paper by Kutenia and Kotos, which shows that in the Swiss referendum in November 2019 on the minaret ban, the, the bias of some local media in reporting more crimes committed by foreigners and uh, people with migration background influenced uh, the, the outcome of the vote by five percentage points. So in contrast to the paper by Coutinier, which deals with the idea of selective reporting, here, our focus is on the content of the newspapers. So uh, once we know about this uh, policy reform, our first job is to verify whether they have really changed, like the Sächsische Zeitung, whether they really changed this to uh, the, their reporting policy. To do this, we downloaded a media data from 25 uh, regional and national German newspapers published between 2014 and December 2018. And we analyzed the content of these articles. So first we do, did some data cleaning, removing all articles that reported on minor crimes like traffic violation, environmental crime, fraud, etc. So we use some lexicons for that. And we end up with 400,000. So we drop about 145,000 articles here. And then we classify the articles in different crime categories following the international classification. And um, these are here murder, assault, sexual violence, drugs, human trafficking, smuggling, and, and terrorism. So we have a substantial share of articles in each of these uh, categories. The majority is in assaults and threats. So then we want to know whether in these articles, the origin of the criminal is uh, revealed or the suspect. So for that, we built three lexicons. The, the first lexicon identifies nationalities. So we, we just listed the maximum number of words that can be used for that. The second lexicon identifies only Germans. And the third lexicon identifies immigration markers such as immigrant, refugee, asylum seeker. These are words that reveal a foreign origin, but not a specific country. So here's an example. 
uh, text where you can see that the words we detect are attacked. So this is, as, uh, um, we infer from that, that the article talks about uh, assault and the nationality here is uh, German. So uh, this is a case where the, the suspect was German, but of course this word alone can lead to, uh, mislead also. Uh, it can be uh, related to other things, but I will discuss that uh, a bit later. So of course, like I just said, this measure of this crude measure we have is a bit noisy. We can over detect the word German or any other nationality that is related to another word in the, in the paper and not to the uh, criminal. But this measurement error in our view is not problematic as long as it's not systematically related to our treatment. And this is what we, we want to test here a bit more in detail. And in the worst case, if the measurement error is non-systematic. In the worst case, it will only reduce the precision of our estimates, but not introduce systematic bias. So as a first check, we, we can compare. We read actually uh, about 980 newspaper articles. We could not read the 500, uh, the 400,000, of course. But we compared our uh, manual classification with the automatic one here. And what we get is that if you combine the true negatives and the true positives in uh, just detecting whether the article is relevant for our analysis, remember the, the relevance is being uh, reporting an important crime. So excluding articles that just talk about the movie or something like that. We, we reach an accuracy rate of 78%. So this is uh, quite good in our view. And um, if we go one step further among the, the, the relevant articles, we look at uh, the detection of the origins, we have an accuracy rate of 89%. So in 89% of cases, the algorithm detects the correct origin. And in 10% uh, of cases, of course, uh, it's noisy. So this is good enough for our analysis, we guess. And here's the list of articles we, we included in our analysis. So this was basically limited by um, the budget, uh, our budget to, to process the data. So we, we try to represent, uh, have an article or one or two articles for each German region, but not articles, not all um, important newspapers could be found in, uh, on the Factiva, but we have still have a good enough coverage. And if you look at the this line here, the Sächsische Zeitung, the, the, the article which uh, represents the, the newspaper representing the treatment, corresponds to about eight or 9% of the, the total number of articles we have in the data set. Then we, once we, we know how to identify the, whether the, the article reports crime, uh, the origin of the criminal or not, we want to know whether there's a specific change for the Sächsische Zeitung. So here is a just, uh, this is a simple raw data plot. So you can already see here that following the uh, July 2016, the Sächsische Zeitung started to depart from the mean of the other newspapers. So even we, we did this also with a synthetic control, you get something quite similar. This is the share of articles reporting one of the words we associate with origin in our lexicon. So, here we, you can also see that we can do this for, this is taking all the lexicons. This is only taking the countries of origin and this is taking only the words German. So in each case here, you can see that there's, there's some, some substantial differences following the, um, the policy change. So this is the first indication that they indeed implemented the policy change as they said but we want to test this uh, in a more systematic way and we uh, estimate the following equation. So 
the dependent variable here is the disclosure rate, which is the share of articles reporting the origin of criminal. And we interact this with a dummy for the Sächsische Zeitung and a dummy for the period after July 2016. We control for newspaper fixed effects and time fixed effects at the monthly level. And standard errors are clustered at the uh, newspaper level. So here you can see that there's a jump of the difference we just saw. It's quite similar here to what we can estimate about eight percentage points uh, difference following the, the announcement. So here we, we do the same for the different types of lexicons. And interestingly, what we see here is that the effect is mostly driven by the articles revealing that the, the suspect or the offender is German. So here we have the strongest effect. We don't have any effect, uh, statistically significant effect on immigration markers. And we have some effects on, on uh, the other uh, countries of origin, so nationalities, but it's not as strong as the case for uh, German nationality. We can also check whether the, the lack of effect on the country of origin is due to the fact that we have too many nationalities. So even if we restrict to the top five origin diasporas in Germany, which are more likely to, so these are the, 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 the countries with more uh, diaspora in Germany, which are more likely to be associated with crime. We don't have a, a strong effect as for Germans. And given the context of the refugee crisis, we, we thought maybe they started reporting more on refugees, but that's actually not the case. Uh, well, one small clarification on this graph. Yes. So it, it seems that there is some anticipation, right? Uh, uh, so basically, you know, like if you see the omitted category, which happened just before the policy change, it's already like above the mean for the previous period. So I don't know if it's reasonable to, to think that there, you mean, you there mean are. Here? You mean here? In all the graphs, right? The, yes, omitted uh, the omitted category that you're putting as the, the date yes. before the policy change. Yes. That could uh, it's be. All, it's always systematically above and very often statistically significantly different than the previous thoughts, right? Which yeah, maybe that reflects that the policy started to change before they fully agreed that that was going to take place. Exactly. Uh, that's a possibility. So it could be the period between. January and July, so the, the time where the, the discussion was very intense. But so, so if, if that's the case, maybe you want to make the omitted category right bef a, a little bit before that, right? Uh, yes, I mean, here we, we took the date where they, they did the official announcement, but our results also hold if we, we just uh, use this whole period as the omitted category. I don't. Uh, I don't know if that answers your point. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I mean, I. You know, I'm not doubting your results. I think that you're underestimating the the truest the true. The yeah. True there's, point there's estimate. This, yeah. It's there's a gray, gray a fuzzy period. Sorry. Yeah. Hi, Italy. Uh, I have a another question about this trend. Have you have you looked at the type of crime that is reported because I am a bit worried that there is a salience effect in the sense that if this is Zeitung, this reports more and yes. more crime committed by Germans, the type of crime has also yes. changed. That's exactly the point what I want to check here. So, so here we, we want to make sure that there was no other major change in the reporting of the Sächsische Zeitung. So first, we want to verify that our results on the on the change we, we saw we saw here in the probability to report the origin. As I said, it's a noisy measure we use, so we can refine it by also detecting whether the article mentions the perpetrator, the word words associated with perpetrator, and we find effects only in, in these articles. If the article only mentions victims we don't have any effect. So we find this is a bit reassuring that confirming that we are indeed detecting the origins of perpetrators. Then we can look at the total articles reporting on crime. So that's not, that didn't change the difference between Sächsische Zeitung and other newspapers. 
We can also look at the different types of crime. And here also, we don't see any jump in the Sächsische Zeitung compared to, to other newspapers. We can also think that maybe they change the way they discuss content of the articles. Maybe they, they have some more positive or more negative message. They change the way they write. We don't find evidence for that either. We, we did some text analysis, some sentiment analysis, and lo looking at different emotions, words associated with emotions. Basically, they are always in line with the before and after. The, they are in line with the mean of other newspapers. And finally, but we sorry, can look. Sorry, sorry, just, just, I mean, so one another thing that could be interesting is to look at whether all of this text analysis that you do, so the emotion and stuff like this, do they, I mean, I guess that they differ depending on the origin of the perpetrators or are they, have you looked at that? Or have you looked at the, have the this type is, of, because here yeah. you look at average, right? But you, you do not distinguish between articles reporting German perpetrators and immigrant yeah. ones, right? I see, yeah, you mean an interaction. Okay, yeah, we didn't check that. We just looked if they had changed maybe their general policy on these types of articles. We didn't look at the specifics, but we this is something we, we can look at. Thanks. Yeah, so if we look at different articles reporting on different types of crime, we find the effect on all categories I had previously mentioned. The effect is very small on articles reporting on immigration crimes. It's almost not statistically or economically significant here. So this also confirms that they it's not because they just started to report more on immigration or uh, refugees or illegal migration. So then we, uh, once we are uh, a bit uh, sure that they did change, that the Sächsische Zeitung did change their reporting policy, we want to know whether this affected the natives' attitude in the diffusion areas of the Sächsische Zeitung. So for that, we use the German socioeconomic panel, which is uh, um, includes about 20,000 respondents per year. So we have enough observations to capture variation between localities. And uh, we, we use specifically the question, how concerned are you about the following issues? And then you can answer this question for immigration, health, environment, economy, uh, personal situation, and crime. Here we calculate a dummy variable equal to one if the person responds a lot of worries and zero if the person says no worries or some worries. And we use the month of the interview and the residence of the person, so at the municipality level, to infer the exposure to the Sächsische Zeitung. So if we look here, we take a quick look at the distribution of the responses. Here, the, the Sächsische Zeitung is published in, in the region Saxony. So there are slightly more people reporting a lot of worries, but it's not completely, I mean, it's in line with the, the region overall, the, the East, Eastern Germany here. The, the worries about immigration are higher than uh, elsewhere. And so, in our first identification strategy, so this is the reduced form, we calculate the, the diffusion of the, so the exposure is the diffusion the, of the Sächsische Zeitung, which is the total sales of the Sächsische Zeitung divided by the total sales of newspapers in, the, in each uh, locality. So the locality here, we use the district, but it's the not true level not three level, in uh, robustness checks, we use uh, the municipality level. So here we can see that uh, the trend in sales of the Sächsische Zeitung also matches, it's a downward trend as for other newspapers also. There's no, no jump in visible in terms of sales around the policy change. So here's, we have three editions of data on diffusion, 2014, 16, and 18. And we also don't see a significant change in the local diffusion of the newspaper. So this is when you think about the fact that maybe they changed the policy to sell more newspapers. In this case, it didn't really work because we don't see that. 
So here, uh, I, I already showed this map. This is the diffusion area of the Sächsische Zeitung. It's really concentrated in the extreme east of the region around the, the city of Dresden. And in some municipalities, it's, it goes as high as it takes 70 to 80 percent of the market share in uh, local newspapers. So to estimate the effect on natives' attitudes towards immigration, we estimate the following equation. So we include district fixed effects. The dependent variable is the one I previously described. We always include region times year fixed effects. So the region is this whole region here. And this corresponds to the NUTS2 level here, the, the Dresden area. So we interact this with, the, with time fixed effects. Our um, variable of interest is this interaction between uh, the period post July 2016 and the share of the Sächsische Zeitung. And then we include individual level controls and also district year control variables, like including, including the share of immigrants, the share of refugees so, and, and variables at this level. So the main advantage of this uh, identification strategy is that it doesn't use any of the uh, text analysis variable I presented so far. It just looks at the exposure measured in 2014, so before the treatment and also before the height of the refugee uh, arrival in Germany. And the downside of this method is, of course, that we can still be concerned about confounding factors that would be specific to this area. So that's why we also apply a second identification strategy using IV to SLS estimates, where we use the policy shift as an instrument to shifting the share of articles reporting the origin of criminals. So here, the, the main advantage is, of course, that we have a direct measure of individual exposure to uh, articles reporting uh, the origin of criminals. But the drawback here is that since we only have 25 newspapers, the coverage is quite small for some regions. And also it relies heavily on how we, we code the, the detection of articles. So both strategies have advantages and drawbacks. And by applying both, we, we think that we can still come at some reasonable conclusion. So here in the IV to SLS estimate, this just mainly repeating what I previously said, we use the, the weighted. Um, so this is at the, at the locality level. This is the, the share of articles reporting the origin of criminals divided by the total sales of articles. And this is, of course, sensitive to the number of articles we have, the share of the 25 articles we have in the total sales, because obviously we cannot calculate this for other newspapers. So here's the, the for the reduced form, here's the, our baseline estimates. So we find that- Sorry, uh, sorry just, Siku, just a question. Yes. I, I thought that the way you were sampling the newspaper was you had only a sample of, of crime article, right? Yes. I mean, that's what we downloaded, yes. So to compute the exposure, are you somehow making an assumption about the share of crime-related newspaper among total newspaper across newspaper? Or do you need to make an extra assumption about or that <clears throat> yeah we are taking the share of articles reporting on crime and looking at the share of articles within those that report the origin so you are right if the share of articles reporting crime overall changes uh, that could uh, of course uh, bias our results but we checked that for the Sächsische Zeitung i don't think we checked it for all other newspapers but I showed previously a slide where we checked for the Sächsische Zeitung that the share of articles in the total number of articles published, the share of articles reporting on crime did not change. That's your point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm just struggling with how does it matter or whether it's 
important or yeah, not in, I in, think in, in it, your it matter. Uh, at the end so uh, i'm uh, it I'm would matter. Sure it that. would matter. I agree with you, but we don't find evidence, at least for the Zexish side. I'm not sure. Uh, we didn't check it for all other newspapers, but I don't see an obvious reason why all newspapers should change the number of articles reporting on on crime. So, um, yeah, I I think we we could we should check that also. So we find that the policy change reduced the um, the probability to be very worried about crime by five percentage points in, in our preferred specification here. So of course you could be worried that, okay, uh, this is an, uh, Saxony is in East Germany, East Germany is very specific in Germany. So we also verify that the results hold if we limit the sample to East Germany, we have very, very similar results. And keep in mind that in all regressions, we include the year, month, and region fixed effects. So this will would control for trends in attitudes towards immigration at the regional, uh, so the not so one level anyway. So we are sure about this. We also look at some placebo regressions, looking at worries about other uh, topics. We don't find any effect on worries about health, environment, personal situation, or the economy. We find an effect on worries about crime. So this is not very surprising, we think, because as we said in the introduction, crime and migration are related. And if you see many more articles reporting that the natives are actually doing most of the crime, then given that they are by definition more natives, maybe you would be more worried about crime also. So that's how we, we interpret this, but of course, this is just our own uh, reading of the results. So then we do some heterogeneity analysis and in line with the predictions of a simple Bayesian model, we find that people who are less likely to be well informed about crime statistics are actually more strongly affected by the, the, the effect is stronger for those people. So these are high school dropouts, or if we take younger people or people who are unemployed, we have a larger effect for these groups. So we take this as an indication that the, the Bayesian framework is actually a good uh, way to think about this effect. Next, we estimate our effects using the two stage least square estimates I, I presented uh, previously. And here we have two different specifications. So in the, in the first, if we, if we take all articles, we don't have a very strong effect. This is because here the coverage of our 25 uh, newspapers is uh, important. So if we restrict the sample to the localities where we have a coverage of 50% or higher, we have a strong negative effect. And if we restrict the disclosure to articles disclosing the, the German origin, we also have a very strong negative effect. So uh, we consistently find that the policy change reduced probability of being very concerned about immigration. So we can look at the effect. The advantage of the IV is that we, since we use the text analysis, we can break it down by different types of crime. And what we find is that the effect is visible at different levels of magnitude for all, uh, all types of articles. And we can also look here at the effect by the categorization I presented earlier. So if we take articles that only mention the words associated with victims, we don't have any effect. If we restrict to articles where the words associated with perpetrators are mentioned, we have a very, very strong effect again. So we, we view this as, we view this as a, a third indication that our results are indeed capturing the effect we, we, we try to measure, which is the, the effect of this policy change. So, so to interpret our results, we can follow De La Vigne and Kaplan and calculate the persuasion rate, which basically tells us how many people change their mind about uh, uh, worries about immigration 
following this policy change of the Sächsische Zeitung. And our estimate is that about, uh, for the IV estimate, about 11% change their minds from being very concerned about immigration to being either somewhat concerned or not concerned at all. So this brings me to some concluding remarks. Can I just so, jump in and ask you a quick, I mean, it's kind of a, a big picture question. I know you're almost out of time, yeah. but I'm just wondering, I mean, in the end, you kind of have a case study where one, one newspaper changes its policies. And I mean, I guess I'm just a bit worried that, I mean, eff effectively you have a difference in difference type setup, even though you're not calling it that. And just to the extent that I might worry that something else has gone on in the Dresden area, you know, that relates to people's thinking about crime that's not to do with the newspaper. I mean, your timing, was there a particular reason you haven't? I mean, I, to me, it seems more natural to think of more of a synthetic control or matching type setup where you try to compare the Dresden area to a, either a synthetic or a real area that's very similar. I mean, I just think you would have more, I mean, clearly with the attitude side, you would have a lot smaller sample, but in a lot of sense, I don't know, you have, a, you have an artificially big sample in my mind because you have, you know, a quarter percent of your sample that's treated and the rest is all not treated. I mean, have yes. you... Yes, that's why we, we did some regressions excluding West Germany, so focusing only on Eastern Germany. So this is already much more homogeneous in terms of composition and attitudes. But if we restrict to only the region Saxony, we have a similar coefficient actually, but it's not statistically significant because the sample size drops a lot. So we are a bit limited by the sample size if yeah. we go down to the smaller area. But I agree with you that the main concern here is that we could have some local trends that are very, very specific to this area of diffusion. But that's also why we present these two different uh, identification strategies. And we believe that the IV strategy is less affected by such concerns, while the, the reduced form is, of, of course, more, um, I, I would be more concerned about this. Yeah, well, but the IV could be there, too, if it affects the news reporting. I mean, it's really related to Duan and Ellie's questions, too. I mean, it just seems like with the synthetic control, it's a more natural setup where you can deal with a lot of these questions. I mean, you can really see, you know, kind of what the pre-trend pad, I mean, you are sort of doing it. So, I mean, I'm not I think I believe your results. I mean, the first stage, I mean, in the first part of your presentation, you did show a lot of this already. So it's, I mean, you are doing a really good job, but I just think I could see a natural framework where you just think, think of it as event history study and really, you know, show very carefully the, the patterns of everything, you know, the, the, I mean, I know that's just difficult with the sub data. I mean, maybe that's the issue. I see, I see, I see your point. I mean, for the media data, we did it actually didn't show it because it's not very different from the raw data you can see. So there we have very high frequency, high, very large data set. We can do the synthetic control. For the natives' attitudes, it's a bit more difficult because the surveys are not distributed evenly uh, over time. So the, the most surveys are done between um, April and August. So you cannot really build very consistent time series. Okay, so that's true. That's, that's uh, the main, main reason for that. So just to, to conclude quickly, I'm not going to uh, repeat the findings. Just something important to stress here is, although our effects show that the, in, the, in the debate between the Sächsische Zeitung and the press codex, actually the, the Sächsische Zeitung seems to have a point but this does not imply that this is a policy that should be generally adopted because we have to keep in mind it's always conditional on not changing the selection of articles that are reported. So the Sächsische Zeitung didn't increase the number of articles reporting crime of, uh, of um, foreigners. And if we compare our results to uh, the, the paper by Kuteni and co-authors, where the mechanism is exactly that, that journalists just selectively report more on crimes when the criminal is uh, foreigner. So we have to keep that in mind, interpreting our results, but holding all this constant, our results suggest that giving more information in the, in the article actually uh, reduces worries about immigration. And this could be also linked to, uh, to the um, trust people have in the, in the quality of the newspaper.
So thanks a lot. I'm a bit over time and uh, I'm looking forward to your questions. Thanks a lot. So I start with a, with a couple of quick questions. So the first one is how do you deal with, with mixed origins? So imagine that you have a, a German of Malayan origins. How do you treat them? Because in a sense, natives could perceive that anyone who's of, you know, even a second generation immigrant of, of a native of foreign origins is an immigrant. And so it's, for me, it's important to understand how you, you classify these mixed cases. And the second one is uh, whether you, you could be concerned that in some cases, the, the native origin of the perpetrator is implicitly defined. I'm saying the following, for instance, imagine that violence that is perpetrated by someone from an extreme right group, you don't need to write that it, this is German, okay? It's unlikely to be a, a, an immigrant. So to what extent this could be, could be a concern? Yeah, so regarding your first point, so in our lexicon, we have, we just look at if the, um, so it's, it's here. So we, we just have a list of almost 2000 words that identify many origins. So this is based on our own readings of newspapers. We, we detected which words are usually used and then we just extend it with all the possible nationalities. So. Basically, we don't, in our main specifications, we don't distinguish by origin. We just see whether any origin is mentioned. And then in some, uh, in the, in the uh, heterogeneity analysis, we, we break it down by different types of origin, looking at the top, top 10 or looking at refugees. But we find quite consistent results across specifications. So if there is a mixed origin, of course, we would just code it as, okay, some origin is revealed without necessarily, as so sometimes you have in the same article words associated with German and also with some origin. So this article will, will go in both. Okay. And then, can, can, uh, we, sorry? No, I thought you were finished. I was gonna follow up on Simone's quest question, but please finish, sorry. Exactly. So, and then your second point was on the measurement error. So of course, if it's very subtle, we would not detect it. So if we compare our classification to the manual one, so the one, one where we, we actually read the, the 900 uh, newspapers, we have this, this is what you, we would call here a false negative. So these are cases where when we read the article, we saw some origin revealed, but the word is not specific enough to include it in the lexicon. So this is exactly what you mean. When we have words like, okay, the person had dark hair or was speaking with some accent. I mean, we cannot include the word accent in the, in the lexicon, but these are, we, we, we have these cases, but it's, it's quite small actually. Okay, thanks. So Shaler? Yeah, I was thinking exactly along with the line Simona mentioned is, I mean, the people have done looking at the names and you can assign a origin, ethnic origin to a name if the criminal's name is mentioned. And people have done that, you know, they have the list of the names. These are German names. These are Turkish names. These are Italian names. You could run that because I think it would, a lot of people, when you talk about it, it's not necessarily the first generation, but they're worried about the second generation also committing crimes. I don't know if you mentioned this already. So we didn't work with names actually, because I'm not so sure if it would really improve our results because I mean, we would have to include a really big uh, data set with names to detect the origins. But in the best case, maybe we would arrive at very similar conclusions. So I agree uh, with you. And I'm, I'm also not so sure to what extent do the journalists really know the names of the, the criminals or the offenders? That's uh, another problem. I mean, if, if they know the nationality, the origin, they must sure know the, the name. And you can purchase these name databases and you just run it. I, uh, I, I agree don't... with you. It would be a nice extension. Okay. I, I agree with you on that. It's just at this stage, we focus on okay. this part. But I mean, we, we, sh we can also look at, at the names. and. Okay. My only concern is because the journalists obtain the, the data usually from the police. 
the criminal police. So I need to check if if there are sufficient cases. But it's a nice nice suggestion. Okay. Thanks. There's another question from Sara. Sara, if you want to jump in. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for the presentation. It was really, really interesting. Um, I actually have probably a very minor comment, where to, uh, to be honest. One has to do with the way you phrase the overall project in the sense that, if I'm not wrong, and you repeated it a couple of times, that you somehow want to see what is the best way to achieve the same result, right? So you compare what was the council, the press council policy or directive, and then you compare with the, the change of the newspaper policy, what happened. It's just a remark, I guess, that I'm not sure what the policy has done is what you are saying in the sense that, as you've shown, the policy had a huge impact on the reporting of German uh, perpetrators, right? Not necessarily on foreign origins perpetrator. And in that sense, what the policy has done is just to re-equilibrate, re rebalance, basically. Uh, I mean, it just introduced an additional component, but it's not that before we didn't know anything and now we know if it's a German or it's a foreigner. I don't know if it makes sense, but it's just to say I that. Yeah, I see your point and uh, it's a, it's a... It's a good remark. It's something we, we thought about. So what is this doing exactly? And uh, our interpretation is that if you read the, the Article 12 correctly, it says that the, the, it, the origin should only be revealed when it can be justified of being relevant to readers. So maybe the journalists tend to view the relevance differently if it's a native or if it's a... Uh, if it's a a foreigner, and maybe they tend to find the information more relevant when it's a foreigner. So then you, you wouldn't have a lot of change at, in, in, that, in this uh, margin, right? And uh, saying that the, the criminal is a German, maybe that doesn't look very relevant. And if you start to systematically do it, then of course the increase would be much higher there. So that's how we read it. And going back to your point on the the best way to report, that was more, more of a general framework. I mean, of course, we can only test this specific policy change. And there are so many other ways to influence how you report. So that would be like, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit, uh, it's a much larger project. You, have, you would no, have definitely. many other things. I, I agree with you. But yeah. our, our point is really on this, this specific, because the, the discussion here is not so easy. Even if you talk with people, you ask them, should the newspaper always report the, the origin or, or not? Even with the same intention, people can come to very different conclusions because it's really not so clear what's the right way to do it. And we, our focus is more on, on really this small aspect. But I, I agree with you, there are many other aspects to the debate. Yeah, and I have, and thank you. I have a, just another point that actually would go into in, in your favor, so it's not, um, but if, when you check for native, basically, do you only check for German or, yeah, I know you use six different, you know, routes to check for the, the German origin, but my question is, can you check for like, for example, is from a specific region, maybe they don't say it's a German man or woman or adult, whatever, but they say is, I don't know how it would be in German, but you know what I mean, it's like from I that see. region. Yeah, we, we thought about that. So we could also, so it could say, for example, it's somebody from Frankfurt or it's somebody yeah, exactly. from Berlin. Yeah. But, but that would equally apply to, I mean, it could be an immigrant that lives there, right? And the problem with that, if we use this word in the lexicon, since the article always mentions the localization of the crime when it's known, we would really uh, over-detect a lot. So it's, okay. I, I see your point and we thought about it, but we decided against that because it's really, it would really over-detect too much. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Giuseppe, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, mine was a very quick question. I mean, whether you check religious uh, origins of the perpetrators, 
I mean, usually Muslims are considered the uh, are sometimes mentioned in some situations as uh, I mean, this may be relevant as all the other uh, situations that you tracked. Yes, yes, I see. No, we didn't look specifically at Muslim uh, people from Muslim countries. We looked at the top ten. So in the top ten, you have uh, you have uh, Turkey, but you also have Poland and um, and Eastern European countries. That's a good idea. We could add Muslim origins here. And uh, we already, Seku, yeah, Seku, we already have Muslim uh, identifiers in the third lexicon in the immigration markers. Yes, yes, they are here. I mean, just to to look at them specifically. That's I, I'm I'm not. I think we maybe we did it, but we didn't put it in the paper in the end. But it's a it's something we could also look at. But I think we didn't find a lot of action there, right? Okay, so thanks, Aku. Uh, let me let me call the day. It's uh, we are slightly over time. So thanks to the three of you for for this very nice and interesting presentation. Next week we're gonna have Costanza Biavaschi and Giovanni Facchini, and I hope to see you online in in seven days from now. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.